Hello, hi, my name is Jess Marie. Welcome to Yesterday's Coffee Grounds, where I'm really gonna get into yesterday's coffee grounds, where the things that happened in my younger years, why, why it did and why it's shaped me who I am today. So based on the title, this is a really uncomfortable thing for me to actually talk about because one, I don't wanna make it too personal, but part of, of sharing your story is pretty personal and I think why I don't want to make it personal is because I don't want to bring names into it I don't want to bring family members into it and there's this fine line that that people who are online dance with with how much do do we share and how much do we keep private so I'm gonna try my best to keep this um, a, as uh, direct to me as possible and around this topic especially because it is around addiction there is no shame held against anything or anyone who is mentioned um it's just part of the experience and addiction is something that we we need to be there for people we need to love people as as people who are going through it's a disease and it is something that that is is really difficult and there are so many resources out there to help someone who is going through addiction to not be an enabler, but to be a support, to be a strength in that person's life. So I, when I started smoking cigarettes, it was a complete oxymoron. It was at a time in my life where I was at peak physical fitness and, and it did not make sense for me to start smoking. Whereas other points in my life, it made so much more sense for me to smoke cigarettes. So um, I guess a little bit of history. I have been around smoking most of my life. I have been in friends houses where their parents one friend house who was my best friend her mom smoked in the house and and that's something that i'd never we were outside most of the time anyway we we lived in an area it didn't really snow we got rain and stuff we'd still be outside in the rain we were always outside so it was something that like we didn't always i, I didn't notice i didn't notice till i was older and really thought about it um I've seen my parents smoke and my dad doesn't smoke really. I've, I have barely seen him ever. Only one time in my memory that I do remember. And there's probably a time or two um, my grandma did and um, family, friends, stuff like that. It was something I was always around. When I got into high school, I had multiple friend groups and I was friends with the smoke pit group and we were drinking every weekend and my best friends, my good girlfriends, they all smoke cigarettes. And I don't ever understand why. And I think it's because I, I did elite softball. I was in a program where I was training all the time and I was doing certain tournament events where even though I drank, I wanted to be really mindful with smoking because I knew it was addictive. And um, because, so when a woman is pregnant um, and she has a female, growing in her body that female at four months old she has all her eggs so if we talk about generational trauma or generational addiction if so my grandma she smoked when my mom was in the womb and then um i would have been one of those eggs in the womb so you think grandma ingesting nicotine uh other substances that are addictive going into baby and going into the the egg it's connect, connected like that. That's why generational trauma is a serious thing and something that takes a lot of uh, consideration. We can't just look at a group of people in a generation now. We have to also look at the two generations before. It's very important. And like I said, there's no shame. I don't hold anything against any anyone for any of the things that happen, right? And uh, so that's something that I would say I, I was very mindful of is that if I do start, if I do happen to do this, I will get hooked. So I ended up, I started smoking weed in grade 10 and stopped in grade 12, um, never smoked cigarettes. And I actually, so when I graduated school, I enrolled in a program called Human Kinetics, which is in short form, it's a diploma of kinesiology where you learn all about health and wellness of the body, how to maintain health, how to maintain organ function and optimal heart uh, pumping and all this kind of stuff, this nerdy fun stuff of physiology and anatomy of the body, right? How things work, how do, how do we keep our, our body active? How do we keep our mind alive, right? And uh, I finished my first year and I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship 
And during that relationship, he was the one that I start, I stopped smoking weed because he's like, Jess, you need to stop. You need to get your shit together. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I need to get my shit together. So I stopped smoking weed in grade 12 and then we ended up breaking up. Um, I kind of went on that summer because uh, college works or, or university works for four months for a semester. So four, four and four. Um, so we get four months off in the summer. I got two jobs. I was working two jobs at the time, 50 hours a week. And when I got my second job, I don't know what it was where I was just drinking all the time. I had my best girlfriend at the time it, for this summer and the next summer where we'd go down to the beach, we'd be drinking tequila and <laughs> we, I just, I don't know what, what actually it was. I just know that I was drinking tequila. I was like, I'm out of my relationship. He told me to stop smoking and like my drunk mind was like, it's his fault and I'm gonna fucking show him. And I just showed myself. So I was 18 years old and uh, because I had a lot of people who were of age, I started going to this one particular smoke shop or convenience store and I would go with them to buy smokes and then I just started going on my own. I started going on my own to buy cigarettes at 18. Here the legal age is 19. So, and then I was also going to bars and stuff like that, which just was, <laughs> was what it was. And it was crazy because I was at such a peak physical fit point in my life. I was going to the gym still five days a week. I was exercising five days a week. I was eating the best that I could on the budget that I had. And it just really didn't make a lot of sense for what I had going on, for learning all about health and wellness of the body, that I had all this knowledge flowing through my mind. And I decided, you know what, to heck with it all. And one of the things that I actually, at that time, I really wanted to pursue was working with people in a rehab facility uh, in using exercise as a form of rehabilitation. And my mindset was, how can I help anybody through rehab if I don't know, I, I've never been addicted to anything. I've never gone through an extreme amount of something and used exercise. I would feel like a hypocrite. And part of my mindset, I think that weaved into what I wanted to do. And then I, st I, I dropped that dream because, or, or idea because I would get hurt. I would get really hurt. I'm very emotionally attached to humans and human connection that I take things very personally. And if I couldn't help someone, I, one person wouldn't be enough. If I had five clients, let's just use it as a, an easy term, five clients. If I had five clients and only one of, if one of them, if one of them made it and did well and did well with the program, I would feel like that's not enough. I would want all five to be successful. So it'd be really hard on my brain. And that's just the way that my brain is wired, right? Some things you can't change. You can't change about your personality. Whoa, I drank all my water. My throat is raspy. <laughs> so, um, something I went through and I started just smoking half a smoke, half a smoke. I would go like four or five days with a pack of smokes. And then it got really bad. And I remember going into my third and final year of school and I was living on my own first time paying for car insurance, gas, uh, food, tuition, books, that, that kind of stuff. And I remember saying to my, my best buddy, Dave, I was like, Dave, I don't know how I'm going to afford cigarettes. And he just laughs and he's like, Jess, we always find a way. And there's, that's always stuck with me over the years is there's always a way you always make it happen. You always make it, make it work. And, and, you know, I survived obviously what a silly thing. But I remember going, so I remember being so secretive about it and and I didn't want anyone, of course, in my program to know that I was smoking and they'd see me, we'd all go to the bars together and stuff like that. So they'd end up seeing me anyways. So it's like, whatever. And uh, I ended up, um, I, would, I would smoke a cigarette before going to the gym. And 
I, I listened to this podcast a long time ago and I wish I remembered a little bit more. I'll have to look into it where it is actually a common thing because your body doesn't know the difference between running on a treadmill and running from a bear. It's stress. It's stress on the body. So cigarette, because it has that calming effect, reduces that stress. So it's common for people to have cigarettes after, after going to the gym, having that calming effect if you are addicted to it, right? makes sense um i don't know too much about that uh if 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 it is something that, that you're interested definitely look into it it's something i want to look into a little bit more but i have so many other things that i'm looking into right now so anyways um fast forward i've met actually so many i'm so grateful that i actually was a smoker for the amount of time that i was so i think i got pregnant when i was 22 23 i can't remember so i was a smoker for about five years quit smoking i've met so many people through smoking cigarettes and have had so many amazing conversations and and that's something i am actually really grateful is for the connections that i never would have had for hanging out with with people that i never would have because we're both smoking and and that's something that i'm, I'm really appreciative of um i'm really grateful that that i didn't just narrow my mindset and and i also started writing because i was smoking that's why i started writing journals it correlates at the same time because i love just having a smoke and writing my thoughts i started painting because of smoking because it's just something that they they coincide for me as somebody who is an artist as somebody who is a creator it's just something that now that i don't have it's it's more difficult to create and uh i when i got pregnant I quit smoking I quit smoking um cigarettes in August I found out I was pregnant in November I started using the vape and the, I'm not going to talk about that I, I I don't believe that it is a form it is not quitting smoking I don't think it's a tool to help people quit smoking that is my personal opinion through my experience but I used the vape for a little bit little bit a little while a little bit my grandma was in the hospital and she was sick she was on our last days and um my brother had had something happen to him um not that he's a heavy smoker or anything like that it's mostly weed for him but something happened with his lungs and i quit smoking the vape, I stopped, I was four days into not smoking the vape, maybe five, and I found out I was pregnant. And it was just amazing timing. It was unbelievable timing to, to have that willpower before knowing. There is something about doing it on your own and doing it because you have to or because it's right. It is so different and both are equally satisfying to, to get through it. But to know that I went through that without that, that tough mindset of, Oh, I got to wean myself off. I got to get patches. How is it going to affect the baby? Just being able to be like, okay, I'm already five days in. That's badass. Thank you. Like, yeah, girl. And I, I thank creator for that because I think that was a huge thing that, that creator knew that baby was, was in the, the belly, that this is what was needed. And I do thank Levon for being my savior in, in some sense of, of my addiction of smoking cigarettes and, and unfortunately, I did start smoking again. <laughs> um, so he was born in June. At the end of June, I started smoking cigarettes uh, December, January. And it, we just had like high stress. It started as like one smoke at night around Christmas time. And then, yeah, it just came into full force smoking. So he would have been six months old. And I have been just over a month of of uh cigarette free and just over a month yeah just over a month maybe five six weeks um yeah so it was another two years so i smoked cigarettes for seven years and now i am doing the reverse effect where i slowly so where it happened before when i was training excessively not excessively it was the right amount training hard every day five days a week let's say and then gradually introducing smoking into my life i did it the opposite where i started 
I was smoking every single day and gradually introducing exercise in my life. So I started running. I was craving in my life to run. And I would run and it'd be really difficult and I would crave that cigarette. I would, you know, I would, I would still go home afterwards and smoke a cigarette. And it just, it, I, I'm, I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself. And I do chew the nicotine gum because it definitely helps. And I'm going to eventually wean myself off of that. Uh, especially with intermittent fasting, that's really helped to reduce the amount because there is calories and stuff in it that can affect the fasting process. But that's something that, that is working for me. And I'm not saying it works for everybody, but when it comes to smoking, that's where I'm at. And, and I'm, I'm really glad to be at a point where I don't crave smoking. I don't want that in my body anymore. And, and it's something that I went through. And I'm okay with that. I've accepted it. And I am working to rehabilitate my body. I am working to clean my body and my systems and, and breathe freely and connect again. And yeah. So my name is Jess Marie. This is my story on partly why I started smoking and how I've quit. And yeah, I'm gonna go definitely take a shower because it's been a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching if you made it this far i hope you have a wonderful day i don't mean to tell you what to do but i hope you smile <laughs> and if no one's told you i love you you are loved bye